I'm Peter, and welcome to another edition of F5 Dev Central's Lightboard Post of the Week. And this time, we're actually going to try to get through four different questions since they're all kind of the same and questions about SSL and SSL certificates. We just put certs right there. So let's light up some of these questions about SSL and SSL certificates. Now, of course, SSL is secure socket layers, and it's the ability to create uh, an encrypted connection, so a secure connection between your browser, B-R-O-W-S-E-R, -E not Bowser, like in, uh, in um, uh, Mario, browser to server. And you'll often see it HTTPS. So it creates that security between the two. And so a new user, as a matter of fact, testimony asks, the question is HTTPS on a virtual server. Configured server on my F5 and the virtual server is working fine on HTTP port 80, of course. But I want the virtual server to run on HTTPS on port 443, right? Instead of HTTP. So HTTPS is port 443. HTTP port 80. We've done uh, a couple of those about the protocols. So what do I need to do and how do I achieve this task? And so because Big IP is a full proxy, P-R-O-X-Y, um, and you got your, let's make our servers, and of course, our happy people out here. Uh, so uh, only one master blaster answers you basically, so he, you know, he did it port 80 for the server side, and this user comes in port 80, but he also then essentially needs to follow the same steps, the same configuration for a 443 VIP. So what he had done is he created a, a VIP, virtual servers, a pool uh, for port 80 for these servers back there, but you have to then create um, an additional for the 443. You attach the certificate and, and key and, um, and then select the server side SSL. Now there are a couple pieces to this. In this full proxy architecture, you need a client SSL profile. And then on this side for the client connection, 443 to terminate here. But then you also need the server side SSL profile. So he also then asks the same user testimony linking an SSL certificate to a virtual server, but we kind of answered that. You have to create that profile and then attach it um, to the traffic there for that. But he also is asking about self-signed certificates. And so you can certainly get a certificate from a CA and you would you know, pay for that. You'd get it. They'd vouch for you. You can also create self-signed certificates right on the big IP. And he was kind of some some confusion about waiting for the keys, but the keys and the certificate get generated right there on the big IP. And then you would assign that certificate key to your uh, various profiles. Actually quite simple. So you'd be full proxy, you need to have the client side and um, server side. Then some additional questions and sort of separate from this initial uh, how do I do it and why isn't it working on 80 and 443 is that Tyler G and uh, Tyler G, another new user asks, they're slowly migrating. So the maximum number of client SSL profiles per virtual server. And then uh, D Ward also asks, need to support thousands of unique SSL certificates on a single VIP. So uh, Tyler G slowly migrating all of their sites off another SSL offloading solution to the big IP, big IP terminate SSL. You offload 
uh, free up the servers from doing the computational heavy um, encryption and decryption. So this particular company hosts dozens and dozens of SSL certificates per virtual server. And he's asking, are there any limits on how many SSL profiles can be, uh, can be on a single virtual server? Because they were running into a number of limitations with their previous solution about being able to uh, put SSL profiles to a singular solution, to a singular um, VIP. And then uh, kind of uh, along the same lines is looking for the best way to host thousands of SSL certificates issued by public providers. And each of these certs will be issued on a unique fully qualified domain name with no common DNS zone within the name. So this particular could be a hosting company. You could have, you know, various um, hosts around. So they're fronting a whole bunch of different various dot, you know, example.com and example2.com and example3.com. So that could be various uh, different domains on the back end, but also potentially hosting various, hosting various hosts. It's kind of like the Department of Redundancy Department. So you might have, um, you know, store.example.com and then maybe cart.example.com or maybe, you know, uh, checkout.example.com dot com or just multiple different hosts um, fun dot example dot com just to kind of make up another one and so the question is kind of you know what is the limit uh, of how many you can you can tie and um, first Prince answers thank you Prince it's often tied to the um, SSL transactions per second so always check what your SSL TPS is uh, for your big IP, because um, that can often determine then how many you can put there. But more importantly, from a practical implementation standpoint, uh, many certificate authorities, and now this is from only one master blaster again, uh, limit the number of SAN domains and SAN. So S SAN is just um, subject uh, alternative name. And so that's the ability to essentially add additional hosts to that certificate or tie additional hosts to that certificate. So it's called, you know, multi-domain certificates, they also call them. But from an implementation standpoint, often it's tied to the CA. Sometimes you can put, you know, 25 to 100, but 100 is essentially the kind of, uh, best practices, industry limitation, however you want to um, tie it. But 100 would essentially be what you should look at in terms of the limit of how many unique SSL certs you can tie to a uh, VIP. So this is kind of important this time of year with the holidays and, and people ordering, ordering um, gifts and such online to ensure that you have that secure connection between your customers or more specifically the browser and your servers. If you like this post of the week, this video, please subscribe to our channel. I'm Peter. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the community.